Good evening. So this week your assignment was to finish the last half of chapter 8, which should have taken us through Judges. Now if you went and looked at the actual numbering, you'll see that, or, or um, looked at our readings, I guess, you'll see that we're going to talk about two guys, one named Ehud and one named Gideon. Hopefully one of those names sounds somewhat familiar to you, and I'd be real surprised if the other one was, was familiar to you at all. But, and if you go look in the Bible, Ehud actually comes before uh, Barak and Deborah, and then Gideon comes after. So if you're wondering what the deal is, well, Ehud and Gideon, as you'll see tonight, go really well together, um, and whereas Barak and Deborah were good for their own um, own sermon. So that's why it's a little disjointed if you've been reading and see that we're not exactly 100% following the numbering, the normal ordering in Judges. But other than that, I hope you read and were enjoyed and weren't too grossed out by the, the gore. If you enjoyed that last week, we got a bunch more for you tonight as well. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with our opening song called Our God Reigns.
Teaching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our hope is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession by, my, uh, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Most merciful Father, with compassion you hear the cries of your people in great distress. Be with all who now endure affliction and calamity. Bless the work of those who bring rescue and relief and enable us to aid and comfort those who are suffering, that they may find renewed hope and purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from Judges, chapter 3. And the people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord strengthened Eglon, the king of Moab, against Israel, because they had done what was evil in the sight of the Lord. He gathered to himself the Ammonites and the Amalekites, and went and defeated Israel. And they took possession of the city of Palms. And the people of Israel served Eglon, the king of Moab, 18 years. Then the people of Israel cried out to the Lord, and the Lord raised up for them a deliverer, Ehud, the son of Gera, and Benjaminite, a left-handed man. The people of Israel <coughs> sent tribute by him to Eglon, the king of Moab. And Ehud made for himself a sword with two edges, a cubit in length, and a he bound it on his right thigh under his clothes. And he presented the tribe to Eglon, king of Moab. Now Eglon was a very fat man. And when Ehud had finished presenting the tribute, he went away, the people who carried the, who carried the tribute. But he himself turned back at the idol near Gilga, Gilgal and said, I have a secret message for you, O king. And he commanded silence. And all the attendants went out from his presence. And he had came to him, and he was sitting down on his cool roof chamber. And he had said, I have a message from God for you. And he arose from his seat. And he had reached with his left hand, took the sword from the right thigh, and thrust it into his belly. And the, and the hit, hilt also went in after the blade, and the fat closed over this blade, for he did not pull the sword out of the belly, and the dung came out. Then Ehud went out into the porch and closed the doors of the roof chamber behind him and locked them. This is the word of the Lord. <coughs> God. Deliver me from my enemies, O Lord. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. You delivered me from my enemies. 
you res rescued me from the men of violence. Second reading we are taking from Judges, chapter 6. Then Gideon said to God, If you will save Israel by my hand as you have said, behold, I am lying a fleece of wool on the threshing floor. If there is dew on the fleece of wool in the threshing floor uh, alone, and it was dry all the ground, then I shall know that you will save Israel by my hand as you have said. And it was so. <clears throat> when he rose early next morning and squeezed the fleece, he wrung enough dew from the fleece to fill a bowl with water. Then Gideon said to God, Let not your anger burn against me. Let me speak just once more. Please, let me test just once more with the fleece. Please let it be dry on the fleece only, and all the ground let there be dew. And God did so that night, and it was dry on the fleece only, and on all the ground there was dew. When Gideon came, behold, a man was tel telling a dream to his comrade. And he said, Behold, I dreamed a dream, and behold, a cake of barley bread tumbled onto the camp of Midian and came into the tent and struck it so that it fell and turned it upside down so that the tent would lay flat. And his comrade answered that this is no other than the sword of Gideon, the son of Josh, a man of Israel. God had given unto his hand Midian and all the camp. As soon as Gideon heard the telling of the dream and his interpretation, he worshipped. And he returned to the camp of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord has given the host of Midian into your hand. And he divided the 300 men into three companies and put trumpets into the hands of all of them and empty jars with torches inside the jars. And he said to them, look at me and do likewise. When I came to the outskirts of camp, do as I do. When I blow the trumpet, and I will, who are with me, then blow the trumpets also on every side of all the camp and shout, for the Lord and for Gideon. This is the word of the Lord. <coughs> Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see uh, in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God, this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We confess our common Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. 
And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. And he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come with him with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, through His Son, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Have you ever carried something unintentionally through airport security uh, that wasn't allowed and gotten away with it? I'm sure. It would help if this was on. There we go. Apparently, snow globes are (laughs) no-no. They've got everything. Well... I can relate to everyone in here because I have five times in just over one month. In 2019, when we were in Europe, I lost my pocket knife. Or at least I thought I had. After flying from Budapest to Istanbul to Houston to Austin, then to the National Convention 
of the LCMS in Tampa, both there and back, I finally found it in the bottom of my backpack, which I had carried on all five of those flights. It's still a surreal experience to think about how many levels of security, because if you haven't flown internationally lately, when you get off the plane, they shuttle you outside the security area and you have to go back through it. So I didn't just go through security three times, I went through it at least five, maybe six different times with this knife in my bag. And not a single one of those security people found it. And when you compare it with the fact that two years later, we were almost not allowed to board a plane because we had a wooden statue of a swordfish, uh, and that was not allowed, it becomes even more insane. But I can honestly say, I've never slipped through security with a sword strapped to my right thigh. Of course, this is what happens in our first odd reading from Judges. Uh, after dropping off the tribute, Ehud doubles back and stabs Eglon with so much force that this almost two-foot sword is completely covered up by the king of Moab's fat. Then, after locking the door, Ehud makes his escape, and in the part that we didn't read, he makes it really far before it is discovered what he has done. Now, not surprisingly, this text does not show up in either our three-year lectionary or the one-year lectionary. Uh, probably because Odd does not even begin to cover everything that we heard here happening here. But our other Odd reading is a little better known to us, or at least the outcome is, after a, a few chapters after Ehud, we find Gideon. And when we first meet him, he's in a wine press beating out wheat, from, uh, getting the chaff out from the wheat, uh, because, and he's doing it in the wine press to hide from the Midianites. After destroying the false idols and their altars, he is commanded to defeat the Midianite army with just 300 out of 22,000 men, carrying only jars and torches. Our two readings, or our, our two-part reading, I should say, comes from between these two events. First, we find Gideon asking for two different signs, a wet fleece and a dry one. Then we see him taking comfort in a dream where he is represented by a cake of barley bread. And let's be honest, even if it's shaped like a snake, bread is the least threatening of all food groups. But we know the outcome of all of this. Gideon and his 300 men defeat Midian, and the land has rest for 40 years. Likewise, after Ehud, the land had rest, had had peace for 80 years. However, these readings have more in common than just being odd. They have more in common than the Lord providing rest for his people, and rest and peace. And they have more in common with the rest of the Bible than we might think at first glance. Now when we boil it down, both of these readings, both Gideon er, and Ehud's readings, our good and gracious Lord sends, or saves his people in particular ways. Ways that don't make sense to us humans. Sorry about that. As I said, ways that don't make sense to us humans. Some of you here were in the military, and can you imagine if you had gone into a briefing room and said, hey, hey, let's go attack that army base, full frontal assault, with 1.36, that's 300 out of 22,000, uh, of our 1.36% of our available forces with no weapons and just jars and torches. You would have been laughed out of the briefing room. Or if any left-handed person uh, had th uh, thought that they could get within a few feet of our president with a sword hidden under their jacket, they probably have a surprise waiting for them, right? Yet our, your, uh, yet our Lord uses these odd, 
these particular, these strange methods to give rest and peace to his people. But these are not the only time our Lord uses strange and what would seem to us to be, if we're being honest, nonsensical methods to save and to give his people rest and peace. Christ chooses 13 men that are made up of fishermen, a tax collector, a doubting twin, a zealot, and a tent maker who is known for martyring Christians to spread his message, his saving message, to the corners of the earth. These probably wouldn't have been our first choices to share this most important news to the four corners of the world. Our Heavenly Father has one man and his three sons build a gigantic ship to save humankind and all types of animals. Particular is the only word that fits here to our logical human sensibilities. Our awesome God uses a German monk just looking for forgiveness for his sins to rediscover the gospel and make it so that all people can hear this good news in their own language. And the list doesn't stop here. It goes on and on. Shepherds, prostitutes, soldiers in a regime hostile to our faith are all used by the Lord in ways that we can find hard to fathom, both in the Bible and throughout history, to give his people peace and rest. But maybe the most mind-boggling example of this is Christ himself. Fully God and fully man, born as a baby to set us free of our sins. Born in the lowliest circumstances, despite being King of kings and Lord of lords. Hung on a cross for sins that he didn't commit yet had taken upon himself so that we wouldn't have to bear the punishment for them. He died so that we would live. And three days later, he rose again. This, uh, all of this is contrary to what we see in our everyday lives. All of this is contrary to what we know uh, or what we understand through science. All this can be classified as odd, strange, and particular according to our, our reason and understanding. Yet all of it is true. All of it brings us peace and rest that this world nor our human understanding or reason can give to us. For this is the peace and the rest that we find in Christ's death and resurrection, not for his sake, but for ours alone. Not according to our reason or sensibilities, but to our Lord's, who gives us peace in particular ways. And for this, for what we saw in our readings, and for most importantly, what we see in Christ's birth, death, and resurrection, we give thanks and praise to our Lord who saves us in these odd ways. So as we continue this year-long journey uh, through the odd and particular events that we find in the Bible, we remember Ehud and we remember Gideon and all the strange ways that our Lord offers peace to his people. But of course, most importantly, we remember our Savior Christ, and all that he has done for us to set us free. And we remember the rest and the peace that only our triune God gives to us in our Savior's death and resurrection. Amen. Now may the peace which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
we stand for the prayers of the church. Almighty and most merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give thee thanks for all thy goodness and tender mercies, especially for the gift of thy dear Son and for the revelation of thy will and grace. And we beseech thee so to implant thy word in us that in good and honest hearts we may keep it and bring forth fruit by patient continuance and well-doing. Most heartily we beseech thee so to rule and govern thine church universal with all of its pastors and ministers that we may be preserved in the pure doctrine of thy saving word whereby, whereby faith towards thee may be strengthened, charity increased in us toward all mankind and thy kingdom extended. Send forth laborers into thy harvest, and sustain those whom thou hast sent, that the word of reconciliation may be proclaimed to all people, and the gospel preached in all the world. Grant also health and prosperity to all who are in authority, especially to the President and Congress of the United States, the Governor and Legislature of this state, and to all of our judges and magistrates, and endue them with grace to rule after thy good pleasure, to the maintenance of righteousness and to the hindrance and punishment of wickedness, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. May it please thee also to turn the hearts of our enemies and adversaries, that they may cease their enmity and be inclined to walk with us in meekness and in peace. All who are in trouble, want, sickness, anguish of labor, peril of death, or any other adversity, especially those who are suffering for thy name's sake and for thy truth's sake. Comfort, O God, with thy Holy Spirit, that they may receive and acknowledge their afflictions as manifestations of thy fatherly will. Although we have deserved thy righteous wrath and manifold punishment, yet we entreat thee, O most merciful Father. Remember not the sins of our youth, nor are many transgressions, but out of thine unspeakable goodness, grace, and mercy, defend us from all harm and danger of body and soul. Preserve us from false and pernicious doctrine, from war and bloodshed, from plague and pestilence, from all calamity by fire and water, from hail and tempest, from failure of harvest and from famine, from anguish of heart and despair of thy mercy and from an evil death. And in every time of trouble, show thyself a very present help, the Savior of all men, especially of them that believe. Cause all needful fruits of the earth to prosper, that we may enjoy them in due season. Give success to the Christian training of the young, and to all lawful occupations on land and sea, and to all pure arts and useful knowledge, and crown them with thy blessing. Receive, O God, our bodies and souls and all our talents, together with the offering we bring before thee, for thou hast purchased us to be thine own, that we may live unto thee. Lord, we pray for all of those who are undergoing medical issues. We pray for Nelson Zayas, for Frank Watson, Arnold Kroll, Linda Hill, Debbie Mast, Merrick Hill, Linda Davis, Kate Bartlett, Wayne and Layla, Tom Bamey, Tony and his family, Amy, Albert uh, Swirlick, Scott uh, Skodowski, and Will Hill. Lord, you know what these people need. So we humbly bring them before you and all who are in need of your care. We ask that you would watch over them and that you would remind them always that you sent your son to die on the cross and rise again so that we may live, so that we may have eternal life and salvation. Be with them during these difficult times. We also pray for the, fam the family and friends of Elma uh, Petruka, who was called to her heavenly home. Lord, we ask that you would comfort her family during this difficult time also with the words of our Savior and his actions and all that he does for us. Finally, Lord, we also ask that you would watch over all who serve in the armed forces and the first responders. 
We pray especially for Lucas Cantu, Mike Mirage, and Mike Mabry. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to watch over them and bring them uh, home to their families safe and sound each and every night. These and whatsoever other things you would have us ask of thee, O God, grant unto us for the sake of the bitter, bitter sufferings and death of Jesus Christ, thine only Son, our Lord and Savior, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Before we start the service of the sacrament, we are going to try Pilgrim Communion again, uh, and it will be right after the Angus Day. And so we'll just have this side come first, and then this side, and circle around each way. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also, he took the cup after they had supped, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. Or he gave, after giving thanks, he gave it to them and said, "Take and drink. This is my blood, uh, the cup of the New Testament, which is shed for you. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and welcome to the table of the Lord." Jesus. 
Now, having been strengthened and preserved in body and soul to life everlasting through, our, through the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, depart in peace. Amen. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace today and forevermore. Amen, amen, amen.
As always, I thank you all for being here. Uh, the only announcements that I think I have is we've got council meeting, so if you're on council, we'll be over there getting going in just a few minutes. And um, remember, next week and the week after, Pastor Poole will be the one here preaching. So that should be exciting. So we're looking forward to that because it'd be a it'd be a bit of a hike from the other side of the world where we're going to be. So um, hope you all enjoy that and uh, I look forward to being back. And I know I keep promising that we're getting really close to the bears, but I, we're getting really close to the bears. We're in Judges, it's in Second Kings, and I think that might be the one that I come back for. I know I'm not missing it, so I'm excited about that, but I think it's the, the da bears, yeah. Yeah, you know exactly how that one's going to start. Just, da ah, bears. Uh, <laughs> so, but I think that's the one that we come back. If it's not the week we come back, maybe it's a week or two after. So be on the lookout for that one. Anything else? Uh, awesome. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.